Remember this. What you heard today is that this man in the indictment took great pleasure in torture and that he studied the Stockholm Syndrome, which is to say that he planned to and perhaps did take the women and torture them for long periods of time. Did he keep them in his basement before he killed them? Did he keep them in his storage units or somewhere else before he killed them? But he very carefully studied the Stockholm Syndrome. And he also talks about getting sleep so that when he wakes up, he can play. That would mean that he kept them alive. If he kept them alive, who else knows about this? Who else was involved in this? I suggest strongly that the district attorney take a new turn on this and start to look at the family and their involvement in this case. I've said from the beginning that they are not unaware of what happened. And I still say it now, especially because if you think about it, he had in the basement, there appears to have been human remains. If we credit what the police department did when they went in there recently and took the walls down in the basement. That would suggest that there were remnants of human flesh, human blood, something in the basement. So it's not over, this investigation. It should not be. He didn't appear, even in his long list of items, he, it wouldn't seem that he'd be able to keep all those items secret and quiet and away from the people who lived with him, of which there were several, by the way, besides his wife and children. Yeah, it, it, the Stockholm Syndrome suggests that he was trying at some point to cause these women to become his slaves before he killed them. And, and so we have that as well. But I say this, people say, well, you know, there's closure uh, f for the families now that he's been identified as the killer. And I suggest this, that the word closure is a fake word. There cannot be any closure for someone who loses a loved one when they find out who the killer is. Instead, when you lose your baby, when you lose your baby, you never get over it. The pain is awful. And when something like this happens, you don't close the case in your mind, you reopen all the wounds, all the suffering from what happened before. And now it's present again. And it will be forever. So the, the real reality here is that more suffering is going to come to these families, sadly enough. But I intend to continue with the work in the Shannon Gilbert case. I'm going to be asking the district attorney and the task force to reopen that investigation and look again. Uh, we have connections between Rex Uerman and Shannon Gilbert, we know of. So he is possible, possibly the killer not only there, but he's possibly a killer for other women in other states as well. So this is going to take a long haul, and I will be there, the watchdog, doing my job. Sir, I'm John Ray, and I'm the lawyer for many of the victims in this family, John, in this case. John, you, you, stood, you stood here on, on uh, July 14th with the family of Mr. Taylor, correct? Yes. What's it, what's it like now to come here today, almost a year later, and now her name is connected to the rest of well, we predicted that, it, that her, her name would be connected, and it is, so that in that sense, it, there's an intellectual gratification, but that's all. As far as Jessica and her family, they'll speak for themselves, uh, the, the Jessica's family will speak for themselves about uh, their reaction. But did you <coughs> yeah, you know, what, what Reuerman does here is very typical of serial killers all across the country. You know, they take trophies. His trophies were these lists of things that he did. He enjoyed making those lists. It's obvious. He took great pleasure in, in laying out his plans and then predicting what he was going to do. So, I mean, you know, there, there could be other trophies as well, but he's very much in line with, shall I call it, the traditional serial killer. What does this do to the Bitrop case, do you think? 
Well, uh, the district attorney said in testing for uh, Castilla, Bitroff was exonerated. So I don't think it does anything in that regard. And Bitroff has a pending appeal of his murder case, and I read the appeal written by the Legal Aid Society, and it was excellent. It was a very good appeal. So I think that that's a very open question regarding Bitroff. But I don't see Bitroff involved in any of this work with, with uh, Huerman unless they make some other connection. John, do you think Huerman is involved in anything that, that Bitroff has been? It's possible that, that Uriman was involved with things Bitroff was involved with. There's, there's all kinds of connections with other people in this case that we have made inv investigatively, facts and evidence that we have, hopefully the, the DA has as well, that connects a lot of people, not just uh, Bitroff. But yes, it's possible that they're connected. Remember, there's a hunting element to all of this. In fact, the word hunting is even meant, mentioned in his, his uh, list of things that he was doing. And w I've always said that the, the people in Manorville, the suggestion is that, that there's hunting involved. He liked to stalk the women. He stalked them. I have several witnesses who are alive who were stalked by him, and their names have remained anonymous, but they've come forward, and he stalked them in other states. He stalked them in Virginia. He stalked them in Pennsylvania. He stalked them in Philadelphia. He stalked them upstate. And we have those witnesses. So he's a stalker. He's a hunter. You may see a connection between hunting and Rex Uriman and other hunting groups. Think about this. The marsh is the perfect place for hunting, duck hunting. And indeed, in Oak Beach, there's even a duck hunting club. So look for that. Look for the hunting aspect of all this. He took great pleasure in hunting and, and taunting. John, in regards to your clients, what's next? In regard to uh, uh, Shannon Gilbert, we are still in court. Uh, there's a motion pending to dismiss my case. We're fighting it now, and we'll see what happens. Thank you. All right, anybody else? We good? All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you.